we make super emotional and engaging sports cars, that's a critical part of Lotus Hyper GT, the Lotus Emea. Lotus has got a 76 year history of producing exciting, innovative, immersive performance cars. But in those 76 years, only a small number of four door cars have worn the Lotus badge. Today marks another milestone in the expansion of Lotus globally and in Korea. As part of our original Vision 80 strategy, we're very excited to reveal the next car in the Lotus portfolio, and it's another one with four doors. Emea is a stylish, high-performance electric vehicle with a large range and advanced technology. It's also one of the fastest electric GTs in the world, with acceleration of 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in under 2.8 seconds. It really is phenomenal. In a moment, we're going to take the covers off, and my colleague at the front here, Ben Payne, who's Vice President of Lotus Design, will talk you through why this car really is so special. But before then, I'd like to take a very brief moment to recognize some of Lotus's recent achievements in the last year. So just in the last 12 months, we have broken our annual sales record for any year in the 76-year history of Lotus, and we're set to do it again this year. We've listed as a public company on NASDAQ on Wall Street in New York. Under the direction of Ben and Lotus Design, we presented the Lotus Theory 1 concept to the world, a true expression of our design and technology principles. In network development in my area, and specifically in this region, we've entered new markets including Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and India, and we're expecting to announce another three markets in the coming few months. We've rolled out our new corporate identity across a large part of our network. This fantastic Gamnam facility is the first in the Asia Pacific and Middle East region to adopt this new corporate identity about a year ago to the day. Since then, we've opened new facilities with our new corporate identity in Bangkok, Auckland, Melbourne, Hong Kong, Manila, New Delhi, and two in Kuala Lumpur. This month alone, we are opening new Lotus stores in Riyadh, Cairo, and Doha, and we've got many more projects at design or construction stage. So, in summary, it's been a busy year. It's been a year that has seen Lotus expand, strengthen, and develop, and there's only more to come. That's it from me. It's time to show you what you've come here to see, the Lotus Emea. Come to have me done. Thank you.
you to the Lotus EMEA and uh, as VP of Design for Lotus Group, I'm going to talk you through the design ethos behind the car because as we make super emotional and engaging sports cars, that's a critical part of how we actually create the emotion in the customer. All of our designs start from a very simple gesture. On the screens around me, you can see some of the sketch work began very manually to create this car. So even in the age of all the intelligent systems and the digital capabilities we have today, emotional products like a Lotus vehicle still start from a simple hand-drawn gesture, straight from the mind of the creative uh, designer. Another thing that we're trying to do at Lotus now is really leverage the hypercar principles. The Avaya on the screens behind me here was the first electric vehicle from Lotus and it spearheaded our new design language. Now as we move into new, more categories of the market, the Avaya is a critical influence and I'll explain to you in detail how the design of that car very much influences the Avaya. From an exterior design point of view, the start point for every design, particularly with sports cars like the Lotus brand, is the stance and proportions. So in detail, how we put the car together and how the stance is, is influencing design is the, the critical thing. On the screens around me, you can see an illustration of the proportions of Lotus vehicles and how they evolved over the ages. The critical change point was when the engine was moved from the front of the vehicle behind the driver to create mid-engine cars. This was first done in Formula One, and then Lotus Road Cars followed that route. As we now enter the age of electrification, we're taking advantage of the electric architectures to give a very similar proportion to our lifestyle EVs, such as the Electra on screen and the brand new Emea here. So just in some detail, with Emea, we have a very similar ethos running through the car to the Avaya hypercar. We have a very sharp nose section at the front of the car, and then this one line that runs all the way through the body, dissecting the volume and helping to break the mass. That's actually a reference point taken from the iconic Esprit Series 1 from the 1970s, a car completely defined by one line. We also have a long wheelbase and the wheels pushed out to the corners. This gives a great start and actually makes the car fantastic to drive with wonderful handling. There's a very cab forward silhouette to the car. So again, that mid-engine look comes to lifestyle products and it's very unique in the e-segment luxury vehicle space. It gives you a great view down the road because you sit so far forward and gives you a wonderful occupant space inside the given vehicle footprint. We also have very proud fender muscles on our Lotus vehicles. This was first done with the Lotus 11 back in our history, the first car to fare the wheels into the bodywork. And it's an inspiration point to this day. The second key concept around the exterior is dramatic aerodynamic features. Aerodynamics has always been a core part of the Lotus DNA and how we express and bring to life performance vehicles. And EMEA is absolutely no different. So there are a number of different systems we use around the car. There are passive systems and there are active systems. Some of the passive aerodynamics is this concept of porosity we have. 